St. Luke, we're going to look at verses uh, 10 of the 15th chapter as well as verse 32. This is taken from the New Revised Standard Version of our Bibles and it reads like this, verse 10. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. In verse 32, it was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and he is alive again and was lost and is found. Hmm. If you read in your Bibles, 1 Timothy, 1st chapter, the 15th verse, it's a saying that is faithful and true that Christ came into the world to save sinners. It is his express purpose in coming into the mm -hmm. world that there would be made available to all of us sinners unto salvation. Amid uh, the season of which we expect joy, we expect peace, we expect 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 glad tidings that's going to make us feel good, we want to eat good, we want to get new things perhaps, see faces and go to places that perhaps we did not get a chance to see during the course of the year. Uh, but the express purpose for Christ coming into the world as we celebrate uh, his coming into the world we must know that he came into this world for an express purpose. All the other miracles, all of the other good things uh, culminated to a point that he came to save sinners. He tells us that those who are well need no physicians. He came for the sick. He came not to call the righteous. He came for sinners like me. Sinners like you. He came that we would all have life. And life more abundantly in its abundance, eternal life. And if we miss that, no matter what you call the reason for the season, God in his divine sovereignty, he incarnated himself, <clears throat> born of Mary and Joseph as being his parents. There's a star that guided the wise or the magi, wise men, all of the miracles that he done in his lifetime, but he came so that you and I would have salvation. Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus, Savior is his name. And he came here to save folk like me. And this story that Jesus told, this parable that Jesus told, is sandwiched between, sandwiched between these verses, verse 10 and 32, is about the prodigal son. A very familiar passage of scripture that probably you will get a sermon on it uh, during Father's Day. But this passage of scripture parallels what the intent, the express purpose of Jesus Coming into the world is for that we would have a way unto God, a way back to God. For we all at one time have been prodigal. We all come here with a nature, a sin nature that is dead. And that we need to be alive again that we need to be unction again to rise up as witnesses hmm, that God is a God who is the resurrection, who is the life, 
who is the way, who is the truth, was all that we read about during the course of Jesus' life. But that's what he came for, is salvation to us. So we who are stray could find our way back home. And we see in the story of the prodigal son, and we'd like to take uh, an eagle's eye view, a 50,000 foot view of the parable, so that we can understand how it parallels the Christmas story, hmm? that we all are lost and that we need to find our way back home, and Christ provides that for us as his coming into this world to be here with us to show us the way for he said in John the 14th chapter the 6th verse that he is the way the truth and the life you cannot get to the father except by Jesus and he being into this world incarnate into this world the God man gave mm -hmm. us the way unto the father thus hmm, he wants all of us to come to him he tells us, come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He tells us to come unto him, for he is the way. He is salvation to come to him, for we all are prodigal. And we see here in the 15th chapter of Luke, the prodigal son, the younger son of two, who decided that he wanted to do things his way, he wanted to experience life the way he wanted to experience life, and he left. After the father gave him his share, he left to the far country. Is that Charlie? No, that's not Charlie. He left in the far country. You know the story how when he got there, he lived life the way he wanted to live. He wanted to do his thing. He wanted to be his own person. And that's okay. But he did it in such a way that was contrary to the will of God for his life. He had left where he was supposed to be and went to the far country where he was not supposed to be. And he just had a good time. Hmm. He had what he thought was peace. He had what he thought was joy. He had what he thought was fulfillment in his life. But when his money ran out, the record has it, that his friends ran out too. Life began to get hard for this prodigal person who is in a far country, away from home. And then he began to be in want, and he was a Jewish person in a hog pen, wanting to even to feed upon the slop that the hog that was a terrible situation. Like unto ourselves, we have gone astray. We have been in the far country. Some of us may still be in the far country. We have been away from home. We have done some things that we should not have. We have sinned. The Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all so I am the chief one of them. We all have had those good times where we wanted to do what we wanted to do. It felt good. It wore good. It smelled good to us, and it was not so good after all. Hmm? And then in the 17th verse of the 15th chapter of St. Luke, this same story. In the 17th verse, it will tell you, then this prodigal person, this prodigal son, came to himself. He was out there. He was a failure. He had messed up. He had did things that he knew were wrong. And then he came to himself which implies that he was not at himself when he left home. Many of us, myself included, was not at ourselves when we left on that journey out there, out there where we wanted to do what we wanted to do and say what we wanted to say and not be the person whom God wanted us to be. We're all prodigal. You've been there. I know you've been there. I know you've been in 
the Players Club. Some of us have been in the Players Club. I know we have been in strip clubs. I know where we have been. Well, at least I have been, okay? I'm honest as such. I've been prodigal. But here is the deal. Here is what it is. I came to myself. And in coming to myself, I started on my way back home. And here's where we want the meaning of Christmas to really hit home to us in terms of joy. Hmm? It says that the host of heaven experience joy when one sinner comes to Christ. Amen. Hmm. When one sinner, me, when I came back home, I brought joy to the Lord. Amen. Hmm. Amen. I brought joy to the host of heaven. When I came to myself, it brought joy. We are so interested in what joy would be brought to us. How about what joy we bring to the Lord? Amen. Mm. And the Bible says that when one of us who is wayward, who have failed, who have sinned, who have thought wrong things, who have did wrong things, who have been unforgiven, who have not been kind, who have not been gracious, who have not did the things of Christ, when we come to ourselves and make our way back home, there is joy in heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. This Amen. does not give us a license to sin and then turn around and go back home. No, it does not. They say, well, if I want to bring joy to God, then I go out and sin and come back. Oh, but true repentance is that we turn from that lifestyle, that way, Amen. and make our way back yes. home. Mm -hmm. We make it up in our minds. We come to ourselves where it says, I have sinned. I cannot pay for my sins I cannot atone for my sins. There's nothing on this earth, there's no one on this earth that can be a substitute for my sins but through Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why he came into the world. So that through him, I can come back home. Please come home for Christmas. Amen. Amen. For this Christmas season is about joy. And we don't want to have our joy selfishly. We don't want to put it in a jug and not share it with the host of heaven. So when we come back to God, clothed in our right mind, we've come to ourselves knowing hmm, that God is waiting for us just like this father did when he saw his son, his wayward son, coming to him afar off. He ran Amen. to him. Hmm, that brought joy to the Father. Hmm, yeah. How many times we have folk on their way home and we don't run to meet them. Hmm, we want to say, hey, you better clean yourself up before you come in this place, before you come to church. Hmm, you got to stop drinking. You got to stop boozing. You got to stop doing all those things that aren't because you got to do all of this before you can come to this church. But hmm, Jesus has said that I didn't come for these righteous people that's up in these churches here looking down their noses at folk who are prodigal. I came for the sick people. Amen. We all are sick. I'm sick. You sick. We all are sick and I'm glad that we've got the master physician here. Amen. So Amen. when he fixes us, we're clothed in our right mind. We come to ourselves that I needed fixes and no one else could fix me but Jesus. Amen. That I need delivery and no one could do it but Jesus. And when I get my deliverance, when I get my healing, I give praise to the healer and the deliverer. There is joy in heaven. Yeah. Angels yeah. joy. There is joy yes. because I have come to his home, his Amen. house, his dwelling place, where he is. And there is joy. There is festive joy. There is dancing. Mm, there is singing. Thank you, Lord. Uh, yeah, because I was in the far country, but I'm coming home for Christmas. Amen. Yes, I'm coming home for Christmas. Mm, but there is another person there. I'm not going to let you off the hook just yet because you say, well, I, I, I haven't been way out there. You know, uh, I have not even been out of the city limits of Dallas. I have not gone to Alabama. I have not gone to Las Vegas. Like, uh, maybe I took a trip up there and went to Winstar, but I have not gone to Las Vegas. Uh, I stay close to home, but there is another son there who was just as prodigal. Hmm. 
he came and he witnessed all of the festivities of this wayward son hmm, was receiving as he came back home. And then he said, I don't want no parts of that. I don't want to go in because this son of yours went out and took your property and your wealth and, and, and lived a, a life unbecoming. And, and then here, I've been here with you doing everything that you wanted me to do, obeying your every command, and you didn't even give me a goat to celebrate with my friends. Hmm. Hmm. And that's probably where it hits me because we can be so prodigal in our self-righteousness. We can be so far away from home in our judgmental views of others, in our pride about ourselves. Look at me. Hmm, I did this and that and the other for the church. I cleaned up the church floor. I, I decorated the church tree. I cooked the fry bread. Hmm, I did all of these things. Here, look at me. I am not strayed like those other sinners. And be just as far, in fact, farther from being home for Christmas than that person who went into the far country, into the players club. Now they're back. Mm. We were staying in the kitchen and we were so far away from being home for Christmas because we were so lifted up in pride, so lifted up in self-righteousness. Hmm. Mm. Does, does that apply to anyone in here? I know it applies to me mm. because I was brought up to obey and, and most of the time I did. My sister got into t much more trouble than I did Okay, and all of this stuff like that and I was just always, <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah, it is. But I developed something that drew me into a pathway of prodigalness, wastefulness. I was far away from home because I thought I had earned mm, God's love, that I had earned a place to be at for Christmas, that I had earned it, mm, and I had not. The God we serve came into the world to provide grace unto us. Amen. So that wherever we are, whether we are close or whether we are far away, whether we have committed just one sin or many, many sins, his same grace is sufficient for all of us. Hmm? If you have been away like I have, please come home for Christmas. It will bring joy to heaven. If you have failed hmm, and blame God for your failure, please come home for Christmas. Amen. Hmm. If you have failed to forgive your brother or your sister or even yourself, please come home for Christmas. Because the Father, the Father is waiting hmm, for you to come home, for me to come home, so that he and the host of heaven can celebrate. So he can be lifted up so he can receive the joy that it takes for us coming back to him so that he can smile, that he can have a quote-unquote Merry Christmas. Amen. Mm, please come home for Christmas, those who labor and are heavy laden, and he, through joy, would give you rest. <laughs> for those who thought they could not get out of bed this morning, please come home for Christmas. For those who are being in the prodigalness of depression, please come home for Christmas. For those who are angry because I ain't got this, I ain't got that, please come home for Christmas. For those who figure that there is no other way for me to get to heaven but by works, please come home for Christmas. For those who or sick like me. Please come home for Christmas. And when we get home for Christmas, yes, in the story, it says they kill a fatted calf. Hmm. First of all, he got dressed. Hmm. Put on a new robe. Get some new sandals on his feet. Put on a ring. That's ownership. That's getting back in fellowship. And then they had a big barbecue. Woo, boy. 
pork chop. <laughs> pork chop. <laughs> I don't believe the Jewish people had pork chop, but I do believe that they had a good time eating and dancing and drinking because there is joy in heaven. There is a celebration in heaven when we come back to the Lord. And we can shout with the host of heaven, with those who have gone on before us, that great crowd of witnesses and saying, glory, glory, glory on high, peace on earth, the will toward me, because he has come into the world. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Please come home for Christmas. Our dear Lord, our God, our Savior is calling us to come home for Christmas. Amen? Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.